Hello and welcome to another very short top tip video. In this video I will show you how I go about sifting my sawdust so that I can make the flock which I have made in a previous video which I will link to in the description below. Once again this video will be short and it will be uncut apart from from this bit the next bit and it will show you the full process to go through so you can see just how easy it is and you can know that you can do this for yourself. The reason I sift is because when you're using different scales, when you're making this with different scales, you don't want big lumps of wood that are painted green, they don't look very good. So it's a good idea to sift this. I will point the camera down a little lower and show you what I do. What you see in front of you is two buckets. This one with the sieve over it is my bucket which is labelled sawdust number one. Here you can see the sieve that I use that I call my number one sieve, it's the smallest sieve. On this side we have some unsifted sawdust. Now this has just literally come from my own workshop uh, when I've been cutting wood and is very dry and very fine sawdust as you can see. What I do is I carefully take a handful, pass it over and I sieve it. And I'm not sure if the camera will be able to pick this up. Hopefully it can. As you're pressing this, as you're rubbing this, it is actually going through and it is going to be gathered, gathered into the bucket below. Now the good thing with this sieve, as you can see, is it fits in the bucket completely, which means there's no overspill. Now this is a top tip. If you can manage to find yourself a sieve like this, which fits into your bucket, then you're winning. There are other sieves that don't, but I've managed to get four sieves, this being the smallest one, that will actually sit nicely over the top of these buckets and mean that I don't risk spillage as much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna process this I'm going to show you another top tip as well. I sometimes, when I'm doing a lot of this, find that this is quite rough on my hands. Um, and while I'm not a fanny, I don't really like having sore hands. And so you can pick yourself up maybe a wooden spoon or maybe a scouring pad or something like that and use that to actually do the sifting. And that's it. There really is nothing more to it. For my saw sawdust, I don't bother collecting the stuff that doesn't go through this sieve. I'm only ever really interested in the finest sawdust I can get, and so this is good enough. Of course, if you do want to have uh, thicker sawdust or for other purposes, you could save this um, and dye it or make use of it in another way. But for me, I'll just throw it back in here and it'll just get sifted and sifted over and over again. So let's get this done and you'll see how quick it is. There we are, put that back in there. Or of course you could put it into a different container and get rid of it completely And another handful. What I'll often do is, obviously I'm not doing this now because I'm making this video, but often this is a process I will carry out while I'm watching another YouTube video or you can even do it if your missus or your other or your partner is happy to. You can even do this while you're watching a film. Uh, but yeah, it's a process to do. It doesn't take much thought. Um, and in half an hour or 45 minutes, if you're watching some good videos like mine, obviously, on YouTube, then you can end up with a lot of stuff sat, um, sifted that will then be useful as flock when you add paint to it. That's it. That's it. I will now sign this video off. That's how easy this is. There you are, less than five minutes this time. It's that simple. I'll do another one as well, showing you the process I go through for the sand so that I can get pebbles and rocks and what have you. But I hope that you found this very interesting and very useful, and hopefully it inspires you to try to make your own flock and your own materials. It's that simple to do these things. So I will sign off as traditional by saying if you're not yet subscribed, please do so. It's awesome to see so many of you are interested in my videos. And if you are subscribed, don't forget to ding the bell so that YouTube will inform you whenever I do one of these. And finally, last, but by no means least, thank you so much for watching Beard Clipper.